Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. I'd seen it before, but every time I'd hoped I'd never see it again. A homestead, smoldering in ruins. The stock slaughtered or run off, and the family scattered all over. A body by the corral, another in the doorway, and others buried in the ashes of the house. All of them scalped and mutilated. Just or so at first. We were about 50 miles north of Dodge up on the Pawnee, and my horse had gone lame from a rough four day chase that had led to nothing. We'd lost the trail and had turned back, and Chester was riding up ahead. He stopped and waited. Then we rode up to the scene together and got on. This must be the father, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he was coming out of the house to help his son over there by the corral. Well, he got one Indian before he died. Yeah. Uh, Cheyenne. Hey, wait a minute. This is why there aren't any arrows around. Hey, that's a Spencer repeating rifle. It sure is. He must have stole that somewhere, Mr. Dillon. No. No, there isn't one arrow here. The whole war party had rifles. You mean they've been buying them? Well, that's my guess. Hey, look yonder, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Coming over the rise. Yeah, they're a little late. A whole troop of cavalry. Yeah, they must be from Fort Dodge. I wonder who's in command. Can't tell yet. Look at them, they're spreading out. <laughs> Maybe they think we're Indians. Now, the last four days we've put in, no Indian could look as bad as we do. No, they do. Hey. Hey, look, they're, they're taking their rifles out there. They're going to charge us. Now, the captain's playing safe, that's all, Chester. Well, it may be safe for him. Just stand easy, Chester. Oh, I ain't about to move. Sergeant, three men. Forward to the south. Now, what's he doing? Well, he doesn't need the whole troop up here. Who is that, anyway? i never seen him before. And I heard there was a new troop at Fort Dodge. I guess this must be it. Must be it. Here they come. What are you men doing here? Well, speak up. We're looking around, Captain. Same as you. Don't be insolent. Captain. What is it, Sergeant? That rifle he's holding. One of them 44 Spencers. You're right, Sergeant. Disarm those men. Yes, sir. If I were you, I'd stand back, Sergeant. Hold your rifles on them, man. Don't be a fool. 
There are four of us here and 80 men behind us. You can't fight a troop of cavalry. How's your rifle, Sergeant? That enough, Captain? I said disarm them. Completely. Yes, sir. If they make a move, you troopers shoot them. Tell him who you are, Mr. Dillon. No. Just give him your gun, Chester. All right. Here. Here's mine. Now, are you going to tell me what you're doing here? No. Then you men are prisoners. I'm taking you to Fort Dodge. What? Well, of all the crazy... Quiet, Chester. Yes, sir. Secure these men. Yes, sir. And then we'll form a burial party. Shouldn't take over an hour. Stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L and M stands out for flavor, 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 flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste, and notice how mild it is. L and M stands out for effective filtration. 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 No filter compares with L and M's pure white miracle tip. L and M's got everything. L and M, light and mild, America's best filter tip cigarette. <laughs> Captain Nichols reporting with the prisoners, Major. Bring him in, Captain. Come on. Up to his desk. Are these your prisoners, Captain Nichols? Yes, sir. Oh. They were at the scene of the raid with a Spencer rifle, and you thought they might have something to do with the gun runners. Is that it? They wouldn't talk, and they showed signs of resistance, sir. I thought it best to bring them in. Why wouldn't you talk? I got curious. Curious about what? Well, I hadn't heard about any Cheyennes being on the warpath lately. That's one reason. Yeah, what else? And I found that Spencer rifle there, and I figured somebody's been selling guns to those Indians. But when the captain came up with his troop, I knew that there was more to it than that. Why? Well, he was more interested in us than in tracking down that war party. What's going on, Major? Be civil, you. I'll handle this, Captain. Yes, sir. You know about the reservation east of here. Well, I heard that you're holding a couple of thousand Cheyennes so you can move them down Oklahoma way. Yeah, yeah. that's right, except for one thing. Oh, what's that? You lost a few of them. About 40, but that's enough. You saw that. Yeah. Who's leading them? A young renegade called Stone Eagle. Then why didn't the captain go after him instead of stopping to take us prisoner? The captain's orders were to catch whoever's selling those rifles. Thought you might have something to do with it. Sure, but he still might have been able to run down Stone Eagle's party. Well, what good did that do? Other leaders will come up and place a Stone Eagle. As long as rifles are available, there isn't a brave on that reservation that won't hear about it sooner or later and slip away from it. Well, can't you patrol the reservation? Uh, that's the whole point. I don't have enough men for more than a token patrol. Oh, I see. This gun running isn't stopped. This situation will become more and more serious. Well, I understand now, Major. Major? No, wait, Captain. You let me explain. You're new out here. You did right bringing in these two. About as disreputable a looking pair as I've seen since the border war days. Looked like they've been living in a badger hole. Yes, sir. That's what I thought. Yeah. I expect they've been on a ride somewhere. Take them out, give them a bath, a couple of clean shirts, and bring them back. Right, sir. And then have a couple extra places set for them in the officer's mess. <laughs> Been a long time since Chester and Marshal Dillon have visited Fort Dodge. Marshal Dillon? 
Yeah, well, it's understandable, Captain. I'd done the same if I hadn't known him as long as I have. Now, you were acting on orders, Captain. Even though your orders lack intelligence. What's that mean, Marshal? I'm sorry I shouldn't interfere, Major. It's not my army. I want to know. Well, I meant intelligence in the military sense. Uh, go on. Well... Look, you're chasing all around over the prairie looking for some gun runners that you probably will never find. Why not? Well, you haven't found them yet, have you? No, but if you were a Cheyenne, I'll bet you could. Now, that's what I mean by intelligence. I've asked our Indian scouts... Oh, the Cheyennes hate your Indian scouts worse than they hate you. I know it. I wish I knew what to do. Major, uh, is Chief Longrobe on that reservation? Well, the old man? Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. Why? Well, he's a friend of mine. At least he was a long time ago. Now, go on. Well, I might have a talk with him. Impossible. Oh, why? Indian's too restless. I wouldn't dare send you and a guard into that camp. Well, I'll go without a guard. They'd kill any white man walked in there alone. I'll try to reach a long road before they do. No. Uh, not worth it, Marshal. Well, I'll let you know about that tomorrow, Major... You're going tonight. Yeah. Might help get the picture of that homesteader and his family out of my mind before I try to sleep. Throw your gun belt across your saddle, Chester. Do what? The gun won't do you any good if these Cheyennes decide they want us. All right, sir. Now, you wanted to come, Chester. Oh, I ain't complaining. Not yet, anyway. I'm okay. Let's go. Gracious, I wish I at least had me a boy, not Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it's late. Most of these people are asleep. There's 2,000 Cheyennes in this camp. They ain't all asleep. No. No, we're being watched every second. Yeah, and some young buck could get his first cool feather by spearing us. <laughs> you wouldn't want to stand in the way of a man becoming a brave, would you, Chester? I am also thinking about how they treat people that ain't killed right off. Where they turn them over to the squaws for torture and stuff. Oh, now you're even afraid of women, huh? Cheyenne women, I am. Uh-oh. Over there, Mr. Dillon. We're being stopped. Yeah, I see him. Just keep walking. And don't make any quick moves. Oh, no, yo, yo. Do you like long robe, no, yo? All right, Sawyer. All right, let's move, Chester. But keep an eye on him. He's still standing there. No, I told him I'm a friend of Long Robes. Luckily, he's from the same clan. Which clan's that? White Fox. There it is. See that medicine pole over there? With the white skin on it? Yeah. That's Long Robes Lodge. Good. Oh, well, you. See, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Come in, my son. Woman will give you a buffalo robe to sit on. Sally, who are you? Yeah. Yes, sir. You're lying there, Abba. Yes, sir. Well, it's been a long time since we've talked, Long Robe. A long time. I know why you come. Yeah. Stone Eagle. Four more braves went past soldiers last night. There'll be more tomorrow and day after. Long Robe, the last time we talked, you told me it was hopeless to go on fighting the white man's army. You said that you wanted peace for your people. I am old man, my son. 
Stone Eagle and his braves are young. Their blood is hot. Now they have rifles that shoot many times. Yeah, I thought you'd know about the rifles. Soon every brave on reservation will know. Then they will leave, in spite of guard of soldiers. It'll lead to war, Longrobe. Big war. There are many clans among Cheyennes. I am chief only of White Fox. What clan is Stone Eagle? Stone Eagle is of Two Moon Clan. Uh-huh. But there are White Fox braves with him. Yeah. I cannot stop them. I remember what it was like when I was young. No, it was different than Long Robe. You had a chance. Now they have no chance. They have many rifles. They have a few, yes. But the army has got thousands and thousands of rifles. Long Robe, in the end, the Cheyenne cannot win. He must live in peace or he will be destroyed. Now, you're a wise man. You, you know this is true. You are right. Stone Eagle's supply of rifles have got to be stopped. Or many of your people will die. You want to know where rifles come from? Just tell me where Stone Eagle meets the white men who have been supplying him. And I'll do the rest. He'll be saving lives, Longrobe. Cheyenne lives. For the sake of my people, I tell you. Place north of here. Place near Rock Mound. There is cabin there. Rock Mound. All right, I'll find it. But I must warn you, my son. What? I know the feelings of my people. They are like powder. I know. It is more than you know. Go. Find white men with guns but not kill any of Stone Eagle's warriors. If you do, word will come, and every brave here will rise and go on warpath, whether they have rifles or not. If one single Cheyenne is killed by cavalry or by you, this will happen. Ah, it's as bad as that, huh? I speak the truth. Well, thank you, Longrobe. Uh... When it's over, I'll come back and we'll smoke the pipe. If you come back. Yeah. If I come back. L&M is best, stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobacco? Highest quality tobaccos, low nicotine tobaccos, L and M tobaccos, light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. They've got everything. King size or regular, L and M is America's best filter tip cigarette. Thank you, Sergeant. Come in, Marshal. Ah, good morning, Captain. Good morning. Where's Major Honeyman? The Major was ordered to Fort Larned for a few days. Oh, I see. I'm in command until the Major's return. Did you find out anything last night, Marshal? Well, I know where Stone Eagle meets the gun runners. You do? Then our problem is solved. Uh... Not quite. All I have to do is take my troop there, wait for Stone Eagle to come for more rifles. I can wipe out him and the gunrunners at the same time. No. No, why not? 
Chief Longrobe's a wise old man, Captain. He knows his people well. So? If one brave is killed, there'll be an uprising. There's an uprising already, Marshal. Only some 40 or 50 men. This would be the whole Cheyenne nation. It doesn't make sense. Maybe not to us, but it does to them. And Longrobe never lies. I'll chance it. I'll kill every one of Stone Eagle's braves. That'll show them what cavalry's for. Now, where is this meeting place? I'm sorry, Captain. Sorry? I can't tell you. I order you to tell me. Very well, then. It's your duty to tell me. You're all right, Captain, but you're new out here and you're too eager. Indians are the Army's business, so uh, you do what you want. I'm going back to Dodge. It was true. The Indian problem belonged to the Army. But renegade white gun runners, well, that was different. About a mile down the road to Dodge, Chester and I turned north and rode hard for Rock Mound. We reached it next day. And sure enough, a half a mile away, we found the cabin that Long Robe had told me about. We scouted it carefully and then rode up to it. It was empty. And so was the small barn out back. There was nothing to do but put our horses up and settle down in the cabin and wait. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. I just thought of something. Good. That walk of yours was beginning to reach me. Oh, I'm serious. What if them Indians show up first, before the gun runners do? Work on something else, Chester. What? I thought of that myself. Yeah, but what would we do? I don't know. Join them, I guess. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon. Wait a minute. Be quiet. Pull him up by the cabin, Jim. Yeah. Well, those aren't Indians. All right, take your place, Justice. Yes, sir. Here, get over. And don't shoot unless I do. Quiet now. Leave the wagon here. Let's go inside and get a drink. You're <laughs> welcome. Hmm. Made it just in time. It's already sundown. Hold it, you two. What? Shoot him. Hold it. You killed both of them, Mr. Dillon. I didn't even get a shot off. Yeah, this one's still alive. Who are you? A U.S. Marshal. Oh. I'm going to die, Marshal. Is that wagon full of rifles? And ammunition. I'm supplied from Wichita. But it ain't gonna do you no good to know that now. You're gonna die too. What? Them Indians. They're never late when they're out of ammunition. He'll be here any minute. <laughs> I wish I could stay to watch <laughs> what they do to you. <laughs> oh, he must have been lying. Why should he have lied? Well, then we'd better run for it. Now they'd catch us. Easy. Won't be much of a fight. Two men against a half a hundred Cheyennes. But we can kill some of them, by golly. And start a war. I forgot about that. Yeah, no matter what we do, they'll get those rifles. Yeah, unless we can destroy them. That wagon looks plumb full, Mr. Dillon. I swear, there must be 30, 40 in there at least. Hey, we could gather up some wood and fire that wagon. No, it's too late, Chester. What? Look, coming over that rise there. 
Cheyennes. Huh. There's only two of them, though. Uh, scouts. The war party will come when they signal. We couldn't get their fires started. Uh, uh. Hey, Mr. Dillon, them scouts disappeared. What? Huh? Yeah, that's funny. Hey, Chester. What? Out there. What? Well, glory be. That's what those Cheyenne scouts were looking at. Captain Nichols, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that troop ain't moving very fast. Well, they're still tracking us, riding slow and watching the ground. Oh, them Indians will be halfway to Kennedy by the time he gets here. <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, Stone Eagle's finished now that he's out of ammunition. That Captain Nichols sure didn't trust you none, did he, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Well, Chester, we better go comb our hair. All right, we comb our... Why? I don't want to get taken prisoner again. We still look like we've been living in a badger hole. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You filter tip smokers. When you change to L and M filters, the first thing you'll notice is how mild they are, how easy they draw. Yes, L and M's pure white miracle tip lets you enjoy all the taste. No filter compares with it for quality or effectiveness. Try L and M's right now. They're great. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Ralph Moody, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Buy Chesterfield. So smooth. So satisfying. Chesterfield. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio show. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This is the CBS Radio Network.